After having learnt what is statistical mechanics, what is its role in chemistry and what are the various types of statistics which we use. In this module, we will go into the basics of Maxwell Boltzmann statistics and we will also learn the concepts of macro state and microstates. In this context, we have learnt that Maxwell Boltzmann statistics is the statistics which we use to calculate the properties of the system which contains distinguishable particles and besides that there is no restriction on the occupancy of particles in various energy levels. And you also know we learnt it in the previous module that in this case we ignore the internal structure of the particles. So, once these three conditions are satisfied, we apply Maxwell Boltzmann statistics. And today we will study in details about this Maxwell Boltzmann statistics. Now, suppose there is a system which contains particles which obey Maxwell Boltzmann statistics. Then the next question will come how to apply Maxwell Boltzmann statistics to that system. So, we will start here and we will assume that suppose there is a system which contains n distinguishable particles and that the total energy of the system is suppose E and the system is at a particular temperature T. And further we also assume that the system is isolated. By isolated we mean that there is no exchange of energy and matter with the surroundings. Once these conditions are satisfied, we have a system obeying Maxwell Boltzmann statistics. After this, the next question will come that how these n particles are distributed amongst the various energy levels. Now, suppose that the various energy levels are epsilon i s that means i varying from 1, 2, 3 etcetera and n i is the corresponding occupancy of each energy level, then the total energy of the system can be written by the relation E is equal to summation i n i epsilon i. This gives the total energy of the system and the total number of particles n will be equal to summation n i, because n i will be the number of particles occupying epsilon ith energy level. Before going into the details of the distribution of these particles, let us try to understand the concepts of macro states and micro states. Macro states basically means different distributions of particles amongst the various energy levels with the condition that the total energy of the system and the total number of particles remains constant. That is basically the primary requirement for any macro state. Total number of particles will remain constant, total energy will remain constant. Only thing is total number of particles n are to be distributed amongst various ways and the various ways in which such distributions can be carried out that those will be called the corresponding macro states. And while distributing the particles, these two conditions which we just now talked about, those must be met. First is E is equal to summation n i epsilon i and total number of particles n is equal to summation n i. Let us take a concrete example to understand the concept of macro state still better. Suppose there is a system which contains four distinguishable particles and its total energy is 3 E at a particular temperature. And suppose the various allowed energy levels are 
0 e, 1 e, 2 e, 3 e, 4 e etcetera. Now, since the total number of particles are 4 and total energy is 3 e, then these 4 particles can be arranged in various ways. Now, the first way which you can see on the left hand side that 3 particles are in the ground level where energy is 0 and the fourth particle is in the level whose energy is 3 e. So, you can see that 4 particles have been distributed, but the total energy remains constant that is 3 e. So, this represents one macro state because it corresponds to one distribution. Take to the second, here again there are 4 particles, but the 2 particles in the ground state whose energy is 0, then 1 particle is in the energy level with energy 1 e and 1 particle is in the energy level with energy 2 e. So, total energy again remains 3 e and the total number of particles is also 4. So, this represents another macro state and the third is one more example of a macro state for the same system. Here you can see that one particle is in the ground state with the energy 0 e, whereas the remaining 3 particles are in the first excited level that means with energy 1 e. So, the result is again total energy is 3 e and total number of particles is 4. So, these 3 first, second and third, these 3 are 3 different ways of distributing 4 particles with energy 3 e amongst various energy levels keeping n and e constant. So, we can say that for this system 3 macro states are possible. So, that is basically what a macro state mean. To understand the concept of micro state, we have now introduced distinguishability in these particles. We have colored them, one is red, one is black, one is green and one is blue as you can see. Now, because of this distinguishability, micro states will arise. The distribution is the same, there are 3 particles in the ground level and one in the upper level that is 3 e. Now, on the left hand side you can see that black particle is in the upper level and the remaining 3 are in the ground level. So, that is one way of achieving that macro state. In the second diagram you can see that the red one is in the upper level and the other 3 are now in the lower level. And in the next, the blue one is in the upper one and in the last, green one is in the upper level. So, in this way you can see that because of the distinguishability of the particles, there are 4 ways by which this macro state can be achieved. This would not have happened had the particles been not distinguishable. Therefore, please keep it in mind that micro states arise due to distinguishability of the particles and one can also say that for this macro state there are 4 possible micro states. Similarly, if you try yourself you will notice that there will be 12 micro states which will be possible for the second macro state and there will be 4 micro states which will be possible for the third macro state. So, that is how one can calculate the number of micro states. Now, is there any mathematical relation by which one can do that? Yes, this is the equation which gives us the number of micro states associated with any macro state. As you can see here, W is the number of micro states and this is equal to n factorial that is the capital N factorial and then we have capital pi over i then 1 upon n i factorial. 
So that is basically W will give us the total number of microstates. Here you can see that N is the total number of the particles and N i is the number of particles in the ith state. You can apply this formula to calculate the number of microstates for each of the macrostate we have discussed. As you can see here for macrostate 1 W will become 4 factorial into 1 upon 0 factorial, then 1 upon 0 factorial, then 1 upon 0 factorial and then 1 upon 3 factorial that is equal to 4. So, that is basically 4 ways in which the macro state 1 can be achieved. Similarly, for macro state 2 we have 12 ways, it is basically again 4 factorial then 1 upon 0 factorial, 1 upon 0 factorial, 1 upon 1 factorial and 1 upon 2 factorial that is equal to 12 and so on. So, this is a formula which you have to keep it in mind. As you can see here, this W and the mathematical equation which gives the value of W is very important. And please remember that this W is also called the thermodynamic probability. It basically gives us the number of ways a macro state can be achieved or in other words W is the number of micro states associated with a macro state. Now, we will discuss the concept of degeneracy and we will also try to see how degeneracy modifies the possible number of microstates. First of all, you must be very clear about what we mean by degeneracy. By degeneracy basically would mean how many states are possible with the same energy and this is the concept which you must have studied earlier also. For example, if we have a corresponding particle in one dimensional box, you know that its energy is given by this relation h square upon a m then n x square upon a square plus n y square upon b square plus n z square upon c square. So, this is the total energy, but for a cubical box if a is equal to b is equal to c that is basically the case for a cube then the concept of degeneracy will come. Otherwise, if A and B and C are not equal, then there is no degeneracy. So, for a particle in a box, degeneracy will come only when the box is cubical. You must have studied degeneracy in other contexts also. You know that as a methyl quantum number L gives the corresponding orbital angular momentum and the degeneracy for a particle undergoing rotational motion will be equal to 2 L plus 1. For example, when L is 0, it is s orbital and we have just 1, there is no degeneracy. But for p orbitals, L is equal to 1 and the corresponding degeneracy is 3 and so on. For spin also, you have studied that the corresponding there are two states possible, one with upward spin and one with the downward spin because spin quantum number gives the corresponding spin angular momentum s into s plus 1 under root h upon 2 pi and its degeneracy is 2 s plus 1 and if s is equal to half this becomes 2. So, that is basically what it means that a degeneracy is. Now, degeneracy and its significance you know, but the question is if we have a bulk system containing n particles and various energy levels and if these levels are degenerate also, then the number of microstates will increase. For example, suppose there are n i distinguishable particles and if they are to be kept in a level whose degeneracy is g i. Suppose, then the number of ways in which 
these n i particles can be distributed in a level of degeneracy g i is g i raised to the power n i. That means, increases g uh, degeneracy increases the number of ways the particle can be distributed in a level. For example, if there are 50 particles and if these are to be distributed in 10 degenerate levels, then the number of ways in which this can be done will be 10 to the power 50. Now, extending this concept of degeneracy to calculate W that means, the thermodynamic probability, it is found that the relation which we discussed earlier that gets modified if we introduce the concept of degeneracy and we have W is equal to n factorial then pi i g i raised to the power n i divided by n i factorial. So, that is basically the thermodynamic probability. Here you can see we have an additional term in the numerator g i raised to the power n i and this is arising because of degeneracy. If the levels are non-degenerate, then g i becomes 1 and then we have the same relation which we discussed earlier. To summarize in this module, so in this module we have discussed some basics of Maxwell Boltzmann statistics. We learned that Maxwell Boltzmann statistics is a class of classical statistics and it basically deals with a system containing particles which are distinguishable and there is no restriction on the occupancy. Here we ignore the internal structure of the particles. Then we learnt about the concept of macro states and micro states. We learnt that macro states are the different distributions of the particles amongst the allowed energy levels with the condition that the total energy and the total number of particles remains constant. Microstates on the other hand basically gives us the number of ways in which a particular macrostate can be achieved and are basically a consequence of the distinguishability of the particles. We also learned that degeneracy plays a fundamental role in statistical mechanics. For an n particle system, a single energy level may correspond to several different energy states. These degenerate states at the same level are equally probable of being filled and the number of such states gives the degeneracy of a particular energy level. And we also learnt that this degeneracy affects the number of microstates possible for a given macrostates. So, we will continue our discussion in the next module about the details of Maxwell-Boltzmann statistics.